read um, Hosea, Hosea. And uh, this is how we, how we do this class always. We do, we do go around, everybody reads, uh, nobody cries. So, but before we start, we just talk about his name a bit. So his name is Hosea, which you already knew that. So he's not the only Hosea in the Bible. Who else is Hosea? The son of Nun, okay. So um, that, was, uh, that was Joshua's name originally, and Moses called him Yehoshua. And uh, there was another Hosea, and I think maybe he was the last king of uh, the northern kingdom, I'm just going to boldly guess. And um, so what, is, what does his name mean? What's the root of his name? Salvation. Yud Shin Ayin is the root for salvation. And so um, somebody you know and love has this name, Yeshua. Okay. Now, um, let's, uh, I just want to show you just one other thing about this root. Okay. So if I write these three letters, but I put some lines here like that, what does that mean? It's an acronym or a number. How do you know this is not a number? Because, <laughs> going on. The letters would be out of order, okay? If it was a number, if this was a number, what order would the letters come in? Shin, Ayin, Yin. Oh, okay. Right? How much is Shin? Something like that. 300, Ayin. Uh, Samachayim Pei, 60, no, Samachayim 70, Yud is 10, okay? Now, but, but, so it's not a number, it is an acronym. And what it is an, an, ac what it is an acronym for, currently in modern day Israel, is Yehuda, Shomron, Aza. What is it? Judah, Samaria, and Gaza. So it's very interesting, I think, that um, that somehow, you know, those those three areas, which are can we say highly contested at the moment, are um, make up the acronym that includes those same those same letters. It's a, are there any coincidences in God's economy? Huh? It's a spiritual pun. Okay. So what we do is we go through every word, we analyze all the grammar of it and the meaning and so far. So far. So what is devar? It's a word. Uh, what format is it here? What form is this devar? It is smichut, okay? Because otherwise it would be davar, all right? So that becomes just a shorter vowel, devar. The word of Yahweh, asher, which Aya was El Hosea, our friend. Mm -hmm. Ben Be'eri. So, who is Be'eri? He's his father. What is Be'eri? Can you recognize what it is? It's a well. Okay, what's the E at the end? My well. Okay, so Be'er, like Be'er Sheva, is a well. But it also has another meaning. Um, in terms of uh, um, uh, related meaning, okay? So to, to dig a well, I mean, to, to get a well, you have to dig it, right? So it's a well, uh -huh. but it also means to, be, to, to clarify something, to speak clearly. So yeah. let's see, uh, <clears throat> well, I just, Really? I didn't write? Oh, I did. Uh, Devarim. You have to remember now all your books. Kaf Zion. So some people uh, maybe not feel so up on their numbers. Kaf Zion. We use numbers, the letter numbers. What is Kaf Zion? 
Hmm? Well, we're talking about a chapter first. 27, 27, if you don't have a nice chart of numbers and letters, you might want to get one. And we're going to go to Pasuk. What is Pasuk? Verse. Pasuk is the verse. Shmone. Eight. The, the verb, Be'er. Katav is, uh-huh, you will write, Al, Avanim, Evan, stones, what? Call Divrei HaTorah Hazard. All the words of this Torah, the air, you will make it clear. Hetev. Hetev comes from Tov. Tov. Very well. Okay, so you make it very clear, very well. All right, let's look at uh, Havakuk. Bet. Now everybody should know what number is Bet. Uh-huh. Pasuk Stein. Okay. Ya'aneni. So what verb is this? Uh-huh. To answer, what's the root? Ana. To answer. And the ni at the end is me. And he answered me. Vayomer. And he said, another katov. What is it? To write chazon. Chazon, I don't know. Uh, maybe you haven't seen it. Chazon is a vision. Okay, so we see it mostly in, in the prophets. Um, it's an interesting derivation. It comes from chazer, which is your chest as part of your body. Um, and so the idea is that the vision is like a feeling that you have inside of you. And that becomes the vision. So he says, write the vision, what? Al luchot. So what are, what are luchot? <laughs> oh, not whiteboards? No blackboards? No, okay. So the word luach used as a blackboard, obviously it comes from the biblical idea that it uh, is a tablet, okay? And um, so what do we actually call uh, the ten, ten sayings? What is the name for them? Luchot Habrit. Okay, this is one of the names for what people call the Ten Commandments. There's no, that never says never says Ten Commandments, okay, in Hebrew, okay? It says Luchot Habrit, which is the tablets of the covenant. It's also called Aseret Hadibrot. So, write the vision. Oh, and I forgot the, the word we're looking at, the Be'er, okay? Write it plainly, clearly, okay? Just like when you're digging a well, you have to kind of look at every piece of dirt. Okay, so we're going to clear it out on the luchot. Why? Lama'an, in order that what? He will run. Oh, yeah, it's kind of interesting. So Yerut says he will run. The, right, kore is, what tense is kore? It's a participle, present tense, right? So the reader, he's the subject of the sentence. The reader will run to it or for it or who, who read, the one who reads it Karepo who reads it he will run what does that mean? have you ever read anything and then just felt like running? Oh, yeah. Yeah? yeah? yeah but it was away from something that you read <laughs> no no like what? rejoicing running. that's good okay but I think that um, that this is not such really it's not really such a happy uh, vision that that uh, that cook is going to have here, but you can figure that uh, out by yourself later. Okay, all right. Vision. Write the vision and, is it and, clear? and and make it clear. Oh, and make it clear. Okay. Yeah. So we we can't say we don't have a verb that means make it clear. We clarify. have clarify and clarify. Here we are. Uh, we're still in Hosea one one. Okay. So now we've got this guy's name. Okay. And his, his name is Salvation, the son of 
be clear, right? It's going to be clear, all right? And, and at the course of the whole book, a lot of things will be clear, all right? So, next, be ye may. What is be may? Uh-huh, what? In the days of. In the days of. Be ye may. Yamim is plural. It's smichut. The days of, and now we have some four kings here. Uziah, Uziah, right? Yotam. And what is, and Achaz and Yechizkiah, Hezekiah. So it's kind of interesting because you have three names that are kind of a bit similar. Then you've got this one that's very different. Okay, so what is Uzi? Okay. I just found this out. I always thought that the Uzi, you know, the gun Uzi, was named because it's a, it's a weapon, but it's not. It was invented by a guy named Uzi. <laughs> so, uh, okay. And uh, what is Achaz? To grab hold of. Uh, well, he's the one that's different. We're leaving him until the end. Okay. So you've got your strength. You've got grabbing hold of something. What's the root of Yechizkiyah? Chazak. What is chazak? Strong. Okay. So, so you've got these three kind of strong grabbing guys, and then you've got Yotam. All right. And so uh, let's go to Judges 9, since we've, since we've just been hanging around Judges a lot on Wednesday. We're going to find there's another Yotam. Do you remember who it is? <gasps> He's the last brother. That's right. Very good. Chef Team. What number is nine? Tet. We're going to read verse five. Pasuk Chamesh. So, what happened? Vayavo, Beit Aviv, the house of his father, right? Remember, uh, oh, it's Father's Day, so it's a good thing some, we had at least one father come up today, okay? When you put the per uh, possessive pronouns on av and also on ach, they carry the yud with them. So, avi is my father, but your father is not avcha, it's avicha. His brother is not acho, it's achi. Okay? So, these two words carry that yud with them in the possessive. So, you went to the house of his father, and where is it? In their frat. <laughs> Yaharog, Harag, you kill, right? Do we know this verb? Yes, no? We're working on it. Harag is to kill, and he killed Achiv, Achav, his brothers. And who are they? B'nai Yerubaal. And who is Yerubaal? It is Gideon. Remember, he has two names. Shivim ish. Shivim? Seventy men. Al even achat. On one stone. Even is feminine. It has a masculine ending of a nim, but it is feminine. Achat. One stone. Bayivater, I think probably we haven't seen this. Uh, it's, I think it starts with. It means to be left over. It is the name of Yitro. Who is Yitro? Moses son. Okay. So when we look at Jethro, um, why, why it, I, not leftover like leftover food? The one that's left behind or, you know, the, um, the remnant. Okay. So how, why is Jethro a remnant? What do you think? What is he called? That's right. He is a priest um, of God, and he knows the truth, okay? And that, that's a bit unusual in Midian in that time, okay? So, <clears throat> so who is left over this Yotam, the son of Yerubal, Hakaton? Hakaton cheek. <laughs> He's so cute. He's small. And why is he left over? This is a, a, we haven't seen this in a really long time. Chabe. Mm, appears back in Genesis uh, 3. 
a really long time ago, Genesis 3, to hide. Okay, who was hiding in Genesis 3? Adam, okay. All right, so this is Yotam. He's the youngest son, and he escapes this uh, slaughter. And let's also look at uh, verse 21 here. Same chapter. Esrim ve'echad. Esrim ve'echad, 21. Okay. I can't even see. Yanas. What's the root of Yanas? The miracle and... And the experience. And the experience. And the happening and the sign and the banner and and we still don't even know <laughs> what the root is noose and what does it mean here is he putting a banner on the ground here no what is he doing sometimes you, you got to look up and look and find the banner because you need to flee okay so he fleeing that's what he's doing he's fleeing and he fled your tongue uh, Barach, you do, probably don't know. Barach means to run away. Okay, and he ran away. The Yelech. What is Yelech? Can you see it? What is it? It is Holech. So it's an imperfect form. And he went. And where did he go? This is so interesting. Where did he go? To the well. To the Be'er. So we've sort of come around back to the to the well. I don't know why. It's not feminine. What is that? Hey. Who, so directional uh, hay. Have you learned about the directional hay? Right, habaita. The only really context I ever had. That's good. It's very, it's, okay. So um, it's very good to have your little context. You know, if I say a word and, did you see what happened? I, and I said that and you, and you said the miracle and you said the banner and you said the this and have all those things together. That's, that's uh, what's well, lovely about Hebrew and help us remember everything. Okay, but Yeshev, you know. Well, you think he was dwelling in the presence of his brother? No. no. He was running away from his brother. From the face of his brother. Why? Because his brother has just killed 70 people. This guy is on the warpath. Okay? So, Yotam actually comes from the root Tom, which is variously translated, and we'll look at, first of all, Breshit Vav. Nine, 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 nine. Ele, you remember Ele? Hmm? These is plural. Toldot. What does Toldot come from? What's the root of Toldot? Babies, Yaled. These are the generations of Noah. Let's see. Okay, so if you look, um, we have discussed the little uh, wishbone, right? Okay. The wishbone is going to be the middle thought of the verse, not the middle, uh, not the middle of the verse. And it could be, you know, like ten words and two words, but we know where to divide our thought. Okay, so it's like the panda eats, shoots, and leaves. Okay, does the panda eat, shoots, and leaves, or does the panda eat, shoot, and leave? Okay, so all this kind of marking is very important, and this is what the, um, the cantillation marks tell us. So this is going to appear under, and that's going to tell us, okay, that's a resting place in our thought. Now here we have, you see, Noach is twice. In the first Noach, there's two dots above the nun. Okay, and that's also an intermediary resting place in your thought. Okay, so these are the generations of Noah, and here it comes. Noah, Ish, Tzadik, Tamim, this is our Tam, huh? Pure, all right. It can be, it can be perfect. We're going to see what Tamim is because we're trying to learn about this king, your Tam. Tamim Haya, what was he pure in? His Dorot Tav. All right, he was pure in his generations, okay? And et ha Elohim. So, what is this et? 
It's not the olive top, no. I mean, it is olive top, but it's not the olive top. It's not the direct object because he is not Elohim, right? We already know that. We're not talking about an Elo and, and Noah was Elohim, right? No. What else can it mean besides a direct object marker? With. Okay. So, with Elohim, Hitalech Noach. What is Hitalech? What form, uh, what binyan is it? Hitalech? It's Hitpael. Hitpael. Uh, so we say, but Noah walked with God. But it's not used so much. Who who else walked with God? Where does it say Hitalech? Enoch, right? How do you say Enoch in Hebrew? Chanoch. Enosh. Who is Enosh? Okay, right. This guy is the mortal guy. What generation is he? The third. Stop right there. Okay, and Chanoch is translated into Enoch, but what is the root of Chanoch? You know something about it. Chanukah. What does Chanukah mean? Dedication. Okay, so it, it means that he was dedicated. And also um, in the Proverbs where it says, train up a child in the way he should go. This is also, um, so the uh, ministry of uh, education in Israel is chinuch. Chinuch is education. So, uh, and what generation was he? Hmm? Seventh. Seventh. Seventh generation. All right, so he walked. We see this, uh, this hitpa'el with holech, with uh, Enoch. We see it with Noah, and uh, not Adam, but God. God is walking in the garden in the cool of the day. That's also a hitpa'el. Uh, okay, good. Now, what are we trying to accomplish here now? Tom. All right, he's pure in his generations. All right, let's look at another one. Maybe I'll get it right this time. Breshit uh, kaf hey. There's an olive in here. Okay. And hopefully it will be Pasu Esrim Vesheva. Esrim Vesheva. You see where the little, um, the little wishbone is right in this one? Okay, it's dividing us Esau from Jacob. Right, it's under the Sadde. Okay, what is the root of Yigdalu? Gadol, so what does that mean? Big. They grew up. Hanne'arim. Hmm? The youths. Okay. Vayihi. It was or he was? Okay, we have to figure it out. Esav. Ish. Yodea. He knows. It's, it's participle tense, right? We don't see a lot of participle tenses. We have to take advantage of every one. Sayyid is hunting, okay? Um, which is a, a stop in the thought, but we, but we haven't seen the thing yet. So we know that the next piece is still attached to him. Ish Sadeh, a man of the field, okay? And Yaakov is an Ish Tom. And he is Yoshev Ohalim. So what is Yoshev Ohalim? What is Ohel? He's living in tents. So what is this Tom here? What kind of a guy? How is that translated there? Mild, peaceful, plain. Okay, so obviously it's trying to set up a contrast between the two guys. Um, and I think this could uh, give you a little evidence that he's not really a schemer. Okay, he's just kind of a plain guy. He's not, he's not really a schemer. And later when we see, you know, Esau is like, is he, he rightfully called in Yaakov? And they translate as supplanter. Okay? He's not. No, but what, is it, what, is, what does Yaakov mean? Hey, on, his, on his heel. Okay? Right? Ekev is your heel. It's part of your body, Ekev. And, uh, 
and maybe somebody's trying to step on his head, right? I'm going to get out. I'm going to get out of this room here. Let me just step on what's ever here and get out, right? Okay, he's protecting himself. All right. So, so we're all talking about this because we're talking about this king who is Yotam. And uh, it's interesting because the other three kings of his time are all about strength. But, but this second guy, he's about being a plain, a plain guy, okay? Um, now, there's another word, which is yatom, which means orphan. What I think is interesting about these four guys and the order of the four guys is the um, pardes. Okay? So if you go back to the forefathers and their busy and God is their strength and they're strong, right? And if you look at uh, your generation for your drash, then, then that's your strength, right? And you need to be strong. You need to grab hold of the meanings of things, okay? And in the end times, you're gonna to need to be really strong. It's chazak, right? To stand, to be strong. But what is the hint? The hint is about Yeshua. He's a plain guy, and he's a mild-mannered guy. And we just see that little picture in those four names there. Back to the text. We have these four guys, and they are Malche Yehuda, kings of Judah. Now you know that Hosea is written to what? Huh? The northern kingdom. So it's very interesting that he establishes himself first in the time period of these four guys. Um, this covers about 60 years, so of course people who are critical of the text are um, a little bit uh, skeptical that he was actually prophesying for all these 60 years. But, you know, it, the important thing is what did he have to say? All right. Uva Yeme Yerav Am. Who is Yerav Am? Jeroboam. And he is the son of Yoash, and he is the king of Israel. Okay? Now there's another guy whose name also is uh, another prophet. And his the uh, root of his name is also Yitshin Ayan. Yeshayahu. Okay, so let's go to Yeshayahu. Aleph. Hasukarishon. Okay, so what did you see there? It's the same four kings. Okay, so they're contemporaries. They're prophesying at the same time. And, um, and Isaiah is prophesying to Judah. And uh, Hosea is prophesying to Ephraim. It's in the same time period. So the time period is about, <clears throat> I don't know, We'll just give a round number, 750 BCE is <clears throat> the 8th century. Um, and so, uh, so whose destruction is coming sooner? The Northern Kingdom, and when do they go out? Something like that. And when is Judah going to go out? So uh, they're in the same time zone. Now let's talk about this Yerushalayim, because this is what happens. So when you go to Yerushalayim, so when you go to Yerushalayim these days, you will see it spelled like this. Okay? And it's an ayim. What are the ayims? They're duels. Why are there two? Old Jerusalem and New Jerusalem? One on earth and one in heaven? And the one's coming down. But in the Bible, you will see it like this. No yud and the dot here, okay? And the yud is missing. Now we have another case where we say the vowel before the consonant at the end of ach. For example, Mashiach. Do so you know the name for this, the technical name for this? I love it. It's called the furtive pata. It's sneaking around, okay? So we have, it, we have a precedent for this, and so we say Yerushalayim, and we say it as Im. And nobody in the whole world, you're about to find it, the secrets to all the universe. Let's add it up. How much is Yud? And Rish? Going once, going twice. Who's got a chart? 200. 
and the Vav and the Shin and the Lamed and the Mem. Isn't that amazing? I just miscellaneously add things up. I found a few things by doing that. All right. So why are we reading this? I don't know. So Isaiah, Hosea, right? They are, they're parallel guys. They're giving a different message. One message is going to come very quickly. The other message is still going to come 100-something years later, right? The message is the same. Get right or you'll get left. Back in Hosea 1-2, if you will start us out, and read until that you, there's a pay there. You can stop at the pay. What is the pay? No. Okay. Good. In some, so you know that the different printings have different um, markings according to how the Torah scroll is actually written. Okay. So if you have one that has these markings, you're going to find pay, and you're going to find some. Yeah? And what are the... I think the pay is for patuach. It means an open line. And the line remains open. Stam means it's a closed line. Oh, no, maybe I have it backwards. But it's patuach and sam. It has to do with how much space you leave if you're writing an actual scroll. Okay? So what is tehila? Not tehila, but tehila. What's tehila? Tehilim. Psalms. This is a praise. It comes from Halal. But this is Tehila. Something with Uh huh. And what is everything that is Halal? What is it? Not, not, we're not talking about uh, Arabic slaughter. We're talking about what, what is it? Everything that is uh, Halal. Uh, what is a Halil? A flute. It's right. It's the idea of drawing a hole, making a hole. Okay. In order to make a flute, to begin, you have to make a hole. This is a begin. This is the beginning. De bear. De bear. No. It's a verb. He spoke Yahweh. Be Hosea. So how will you translate that? Be. Huh? Two. With. With. Okay. Okay. By Yomer Yahweh, I'll do Hosea. You got it? Lech. Kach. Lecha. Take for yourself. Okay. Eshet. What is Eshet? It's Smichut. A woman of Zinunim. So how many, the, what is the root for Zinunim? Zana. And how many times do we see this root in this verse? One, two, four. Okay? God's quite serious about this. And it's a big problem. So what is Zana to be a whore? This is a pretty unusual request. Right? Go marry a whore. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Didn't... Didn't Isaiah have a pretty uh, weird yeah. assignment? What was his assignment? Lay on his side. No, that was no. Ezekiel. What's the other assignment? No, that was Ezekiel. <laughs> he had to go to. He wasn't that Isaiah. That's right. Three years walking naked through the streets. Now, what would you rather do? A wife of prostitution and children of prostitution? Because why? Zanotiznet. So this is a very common. Um, literary device in Hebrew where we see the absolute infinitive and the conjugated verb one after the other. Mot tamut, you will surely die. Okay, it's very common and that's how it's translated when you see the two things next to each other. Okay, because who has surely done what? Who has acted the prostitute? Ha'aretz, ha'aretz, me'acharei, They've prostituted themselves what? Away from me. Okay, they've turned away. Okay, now, who's the famous prostitute in the Bible? All right, let's look at it. 
Yehoshua, uh, Bet, Hasukari Shon. Okay, Shalach, when he's saying, Yehoshua ben Nun, Min Hashitim, Shitim or Acacia. We've been reading a lot about Acacia. This is Shitim. This is the, um, sometimes they don't even translate it. They just write Shitim wood, right? Okay. Shnaim Anashim, to men. Miraglim, what's the root of Miraglim? Regel, feet. So these are guys that are walking around. Okay, somebody tried to tell me recently that they were tourists. I said I didn't think so. Because they're going cheresh. Cheresh is a big, long, interesting word, but we'll just say right now that it, uh, it means a plot, like plotting. Uh, and it also uh, has to do with being silent and being deaf. Okay. So they're going quietly. They're not tourists. Oh, good. Okay. Saying, lechu, re'u, ha'aretz, and yericho, v'yelchu, v'yavau, beit isha. The innkeeper, right? This is the latest. Oh, she was an innkeeper. No, it's not what it said. It says zona. She was clearly a horror. Okay? Rishma Rachav, and her name was Rachav, v'yishkavu shama, and they lay down there. They slept there. Okay, so I think we actually got the two verses, which is uh, almost a miracle, but um, it's, it's just going to be like this. You know... Grocer. 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 Oh, she was a grocer. Oh, yes, brilliant. That's what you're saying? Because that's what happened. In Northern Kingdom, they became involved in grocery, grocery. business, and they turned away from Yahweh because they were grocers. Thank you very much. Come back again soon.